Good morning, everyone. Uh, we are going to start now. May we request for you to mute all your devices. And you may request from me if you would like to record this and I will accept your request so you can record it in your own devices, in your own laptops. Yeah, I already request. Okay, good morning, professors, matrons, sisters, tutors, nurses, lecturers, fellow colleagues, friends, and everyone joining us this morning. Welcome. We would like to warmly thank you for coming today and giving us your time. Before we start, again, may I request to mute all your Zoom devices so we will not be able to disturb the speech. And without further ado, let us welcome our speaker, Professor Datu, Dr. Haja Bibi Florina Dinti Abdullah, Pro-Chancellor of Lincoln University College, former Director of Nursing, Malaysia, and former Registrar of the Nursing Board, Malaysia, to deliver her speech entitled, The Impact of COVID-19 Pandemic on Nursing Education. Thank <laughs> you. 
Uli nampak sudah. Hi. Hi everybody, good morning and assalamualaikum to all of you. First of all, um, thank you for being with me this morning, uh, especially on a Saturday to listen to. Uh, I would like to say that you know the the most um, you know the hottest topic uh, uh, in at this point in time is uh, the, the the COVID nineteen or the coronavirus, which actually has shaken all of us. It's like a wake up call for everybody. So it just shows that, you know, um, we are so vulnerable. We are like, you know, facing a warfare. But you're not talking about ammunition, you're not talking about guns and things like that, you know. But, but you're talking about that humble virus, which is so little, but it can cause havoc actually everywhere in the world. So basically, um, you, know, um, you know, when we are talking about this, so I was with the idea of what we are going to share and how it will affect actually uh, we nurses, yeah? uh, you know, not only in Malaysia, but also worldwide. So that's why this morning we have chosen this topic, the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on nursing education, basically. Because whatever it is, we have to start from the, um, from the basic, that is from the educational institution. So I'm so happy that, you know, uh, all of you are here. And I can see that, you know, uh, the, 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 the pleasant face, very cheery, you know, very happy, in spite of the fact that, you know, we are faced with this situation, which means that we are able to control the situation, you know, uh, you know together as a team. So basically this morning, there's a little technical mistake here. Um, basically this morning, so we are talking about you know the impact of uh, the COVID on the um, nursing. So we, what we are going to say here is like uh, you know maybe a little um, discussion on the urgent need for more nursing graduates and you know, and because we are looking at the outcomes you know the outcomes of what you know the impact what what is the impact of the COVID nineteen in the healthcare setup and we are looking at nurses because uh, nurses being the largest workforce uh, in any health ministry so we are looking at you know the nurses and also. Uh, the nurses are basically the frontliners and they are seen, they are seen and of course felt in every level of healthcare. So this, that is why I feel that, you know, um, you know we, we have to look at, you know, um, what will be the impact on this largest workforce in the health ministry or in the, in the country. And second thing, maybe we look at this, you know, the priorities we like to address, the potential and the actual challenges of COVID-19. So if we look at Malaysia, the, the positive cases as of the 3rd of June, actually it is already 7,970. But we managed to contain it. And in fact, um, you know, we have a very good um, collaboration from all um, agencies, you know, from the government, from the non-governmental uh, agencies, and especially from the, the police and, you know, the, the health ministry. Now we, we work together. We work together and also, of course, the public. Of course, uh, educating the public uh, to, to comply to SOPs, you know, protocols, set up by the ministry is not that easy. But somehow or other we manage, I think, uh, because uh, it is also helped by, you know, the, the healthcare workers in the, I mean, healthcare staff in the, in the, in the hospital and the health setup, which also give uh, good education, effective education to the public. Uh, so that they comply with the uh, SOP of, you know, being at home, stay safe, uh, you know, uh, stay home, things like that. So we managed to contain Malaysia. Actually, it is recorded even in the World Health Organization that, you know, there are three doctors which actually are seen to be very, very effective in, um, in containing or in um, managing uh, this, uh, um, this um, COVID-19. And then uh, one of them is our doctor uh, from Malaysia. And we are very, very proud to have our DG, uh, Dr. DG, uh, to Nol Hisham, uh, to be named as one of those um, three 
doctors in the world that have you know like um, managed to contain this uh, this uh, problem. So basically, the COVID-19 has created an urgent need for more frontline for frontline right care nurses. So we are looking at you know the nurses. You know, I mean the the the, the impact on the um, you know uh, the workforce. So to me, I mean the, 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 what we are looking at now is uh, we need more nurses because you know the nurses are not only just merely uh, nursing care, but they are doing the you know the um, organizing. And you know, and also together with the patient on the daily activity of living, and you know, to everything. So basically, you know, we have to look at you know, um, we need people like this because we need to, even though they have to give the care, but we have to also ensure that um, they are healthy themselves, you know, so that they can go uh, give um, effective uh, nursing care. And for that, we need to have nursing graduates which are already in great demand. And then the senior nursing students being recruited actually in other countries as non-regulated caregivers. Non-regulated means they are not even um, registered yet, but because of the um, shortage of nurses, they are being taken and then being supervised by the um, senior nurses. So we have to look at you know these um, these issues, you know that um, you know that has uh, resulted uh, as a as the result of the um, COVID nineteen. And uh, so basically, we need more nurses, you know, uh, you know, so to speak. We need more nurses because the nurses are all in the hospital, all in the health setup, and they, they sometimes they have to work all the time, you know, uh, to, to, to ensure that the, the, the needs and requirements of the patient uh, being um, hospitalized, and also as a preventive aspect, you know, uh, uh, for uh, to the public, so that, you know, they, they can keep themselves healthy. So when we say we need more nurses, we don't talk only about quantity. So we have to talk about high quality nursing education, which is a must because of the changing trend in the world. It's not that traditional sort of nursing care, which actually all of us, you know, has been um, educated. But we have to enhance ourselves, you know, we talk about high quality nursing care and what is it all about? You know, what we mean by high quality nursing education? And therefore, Actually, it is an essential service during the COVID-19 health crisis. This is what we need, so that the nurses are not infected, infected themselves. And you know, the new graduates are entering a highly stressed health system that is facing unprecedented challenges. So we need to prepare our newly um, uh, graduates. You know, um, what, how, how are they going to face? It is not the, um, the, the ordinary nursing care, but it is nursing in a very challenging situation. How are they going to react? How are they going to keep themselves healthy? And how are they going to nurse the patient? So we talk about infection control, even infection control, actually even, even in our basic nursing, we talk about glove, we talk about a mask and things like that, you know? And then we have to stress that. We have to strengthen that uh, infection control that we have learned all this while. And of course, um, so how do we nurses fight the COVID-19? How, how are we going to do that? Because if you look at China, you look at all those countries, and you look at Italy, you know, all those countries all very affected. All the nurses, you know, how, how are they going to fight? And unfortunately, you know, some of them actually got the disease themselves. So, you know, that, that is the whole story about, we need more nurses, but how are we going to ensure that the nurses are safe for themselves and also for the, uh, for the public? So, in response to the call to, to fight the COVID-19, okay, as I said, we need high quality nursing education. It has to be maintained to safeguard the health. So, this is very important. So, everybody has to be, to, to, to be very much aware of this. It is not only, not only the, um, the, the, the senior nurses in the hospital, but also to the lecturers and the clinical instructors in the hospital, which are handling the students. And the graduation of nursing students should not be delayed, actually. It should be given urgent health uh, service needs because these are, these are, we, are, we are now in a crisis. So we need everyone. So if at all, if at all uh, the nurses have graduated and has not been employed, we need to look at it so that they can be employed and uh, go into the health system and work as a team to, you know, to fight against this COVID-19. And of course, as I said, the nursing faculty, the instructors, they must, be man they must maintain their educator role during this crisis as nursing education is essential. It's all about nursing education. It's all about knowledge. 
it's all about the attitude, it's all about the practice, you know, which the nurses are going to, uh, you know, to, to, to practice, you know, in the, whichever, wherever they are. So this is very important, even though we are taught, you know, and even though we teach them, but it has to be strengthened every now and then because, you know, this is easily forgotten. Otherwise, you know, how can some of the uh, health workers are infected? In fact, uh, you know, some countries, I wouldn't mention, the doctors and the nurses, in fact, they have, you know, they are very badly infected and the, 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 the mortality rate is actually is very high. And lucky, I mean, I mean, fortunately for us in Malaysia, you know, we are not that bad. I think we've recorded maybe one doctor and one nurse uh, so far, uh, you know, the mortality. And the rest, of course, um, I know the percentage is quite small as compared. So we manage, actually, we manage, but we need to maintain that, you know, the, the quality that we've, uh, you know, we have um, practiced so far. And then, of course, we need to be creative and, you know, uh, appropriately supervise, you know, appropriately supervise because basically whoever is going to supervise the, and the, the, the young nurses, they must know, you know, how to go about doing this. You know, and then uh, of course optimizing entry to practice competencies, meaning the moment they come in, even from the, 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 the entry, from the beginning, they're already talking about competency. And this, the senior nurses has to be the mentor, the mentor to the uh, young nurses who are the mentees, so that they can be a part of the team to delivery of healthcare services during this crisis. So this is very, very important actually. Um, you know, as I said, um, the nurses, even though we train them, the new one, but as they come into the health system, the senior nurses has to be essential to them so that they can uh, supervise them appropriately according to the situation uh, now. So, having said that, what are the priorities to address the potential and actual challenges of COVID-19? So, we have to in continue to ensure registered nurses receive a high quality education. And we have to emphasize this. If we cannot compromise quality, standard must be the forefront. Because the moment the standard is there, it, 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 uh, and it will be acquired and it will be adapted and adopted by the nurses. So it will be there. So that is very, very important in, you know, wherever we are, if in every hospital, in every institution, colleges, universities, this, this uh, you know, this point, has to be uh, has to be uh, maintained and has to be taken uh, to to take it seriously, you know, to continue to ensure the research nurses receive a highly qualified education. And of course, we urgently strengthen the educational preparation of nurses. You know. Those nurses, we if we take nurses who are uh, interested in their work, if we take nurses who are qualified, so they can um, you know deliver the services, of course, very effectively. And of course, we have to support the transition of new nurses. As I said, this is very important because they've learned that in school, in the colleges, all the theories and things like that. But then how do they uh, translate that theory into practice? And especially the new challenge of the COVID-19. So that is very, very important. And of course, we have to protect the nursing students and the new graduates. We being the, um, you know, the managers of the hospital or in any healthcare, that we have to ensure that you know, um, you know the protect, uh, protection, protective garments like the PPE, it has to be enough. And then you know, we have to ensure that they are properly worn and they have to ensure that how to discard that. So these are the things, it may sound very simple, but these are the things that we need to, you know, to teach the, the young nurses or the new graduates how they are going to protect themselves. So basically, um, that is what um, you know, we, we were talking just now. And you can see here, we have a Lincoln University College uh, response to the challenges. Well, I thought that you know, uh, being the pro-chancellor of the university, I have the responsibility actually to let you know what actually we are doing in, um, in the university uh, in response to the challenges that, you know, uh, that is uh, now in the, in the world, not only in Malaysia. So as I said earlier, we need to strengthen education because when you talk about high quality nursing, you talk not only talking about you know um, the numbers of nurses that you, that you need, but you are talking about you know uh, the highly high quality nursing. So how we how we are, are responding to these challenges in Lincoln University College? I just give an example. You see, if you look at our programs, you know we have a diploma up to the uh, bachelor and it, we, I just give one um, you know example of course basic certificate that is internal 
because that is rather critical. And of course, we have the master, the education, in education, public health, and military, and of course, to be a doctor, philosophy in nursing. So if you can see that we have addressed the needs and the requirements of the education of the education for nurses right from the diploma until the PhD, meaning we are looking at nurses at all level of healthcare. What are the uh, education needs that, that 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 they require? So in intern we are addressing that. So everything is in here. So if anyone who wants to come over, you know, to, to, to take any of these courses, you know, it's all there. Because we cover everything, uh, you know, that a nurse should have, you know, from a diploma, from to a bachelor, to a post basic, you know, and also to the uh, master, and also to the doctor of philosophy in a nursing. So this, this, uh, this uh, programs actually uh, will meet all the educational needs of the nurses. Because if you look at the diploma in nursing, we are looking, the challenges will be the nursing role in the healthcare system. So this education for the potential nurses must pursue to recruit more. Because diploma, we need more. They are the workers, basically. They are the supporting people. So we need them more here. Yeah. So we are addressing that. So we have this program as well. And of course, we have the bachelor degree in nursing, which is actually an, an ODM. That is an online delivery learning, and which is very good because, you know, considering that the, the, the situation we are in, where we have to stay at home, so the online delivery system actually is uh, is a good mode of delivery uh, for all the nurses to, um, to, to, to acquire. And actually, it is also good because you don't upload them. So they're still there because we don't have enough of nurses. So they're still there, but they still can, um, you know, uh, enhance the, the educational needs you know, by, taking, by doing this mode of delivery. So basically, when you look at the Bachelor of Nursing, it is like a, you know, an innovation and flexibility of online listening learning. And this is very important to facilitate work-life education, as I mentioned before. So I think actually this is very popular. And uh, in fact, um, we, have, uh, we, we are doing uh, very well in this because a lot of um, students are coming in, I mean, nurses coming in for this online program. And um, because, uh, you know, in the bachelor program, the difference between bachelor and diploma is basically in the bachelor program, you know, they're teaching you on management and also on, on research, basically preparing you to be a critical thinker and also to look at uh, problems in an analytical way. Because then you go to the uh, master. In the master of nursing, we cover education, also public health and military. So basically, these are the people, when they have graduated, you become supervisors, you are involved in decision making, you work as a team with the other healthcare providers, and especially with the physicians, and they're looking at you as a very effective partner. So when you have the master, and we have covered here in the hospital, in the health, and also in the public, so Basically, it's really uh, preparing you to be, um, to be an effective um, nurse and um, also gearing you up towards the, um, towards the PhD program. The PhD program is basically looking at you being a liaison, being uh, you know, a co collaborative uh, you know, a person uh, from, the, from one agency to another, or you can come even be um, the advisor, uh, not only to the minister and also to the ministry, to, but to any, anybody who needs advice on nursing care. So as you can see, from the diploma to the bachelor, and even we put in the post basic in renal because there are so many patients with this, and this one actually will address the complexity of healthcare, the ever-increasing activity of patients, huh? and the nurses' limited practice experience during the pandemic must be enhanced. If actually, if you have this post basic in fact, any post basic they will actually, because these are the specialties, the, the, the modules, the, um, the, the subject matter will be very intensive, basically looking at um, a patient who are ready in. So any post-basic will address that. And in Lincoln, we are addressing that as a post-basic certificate in Rina. And um, these are the, you know, the, um, the, 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 the programs that we are addressing. So I thought that I need to let all of you know, so that, you know, when, when you are interested, and I hope that you are, Please come over because the delivery is very, very, um, um, very, very convenient for you. And also, um, in beside, you know, um, even though it is an online, you can even Google and you know do some comparative studies on the theory that you have, uh, you know, you 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 are doing the teaching and learning uh, from the lecturers who are teaching you, and you can even compare it with other other journals, you know, and also other research articles. 
So we we in LinkedIn basically we um, give freedom, you know, freedom for you to um, to uh, venture and also to look into new things, you know, and and how you um, can look at uh, you know the the changing uh, healthcare because now the world is changing, healthcare is changing, the situation actually has you know are warranted for that. And so we nurses, we cannot be like, um, you know, complacent and just do the uh, ordinary modules that we, you know, that traditional way. So we have to look at things in, you know, with a difference. How are you going to um, deliver, or how are you going to deliver um, nursing care in the next century, especially with all these challenges, you know? Because by then it is a wake up call and, you know, we were taken by surprise when the COVID-19 came. The whole world was shaking. Basically, we were very So, and then, um, and look that the sector of people who are very, very vulnerable actually are the nurses because we are facing all these problems. And then, the most important is how to be received and how you are going to uh, adapt and adopt the situation. And then, and how you're going to play with the other healthcare providers in any healthcare system. So I thought that I share with you. So if anyone who is interested, please come over. Tell you that you know we have the the best program. You know, um, I'm one of the best program in uh, Malaysia or maybe in the world. So basically, um, so as, as a way forward, you know, um, when I talk about LinkedIn, of course, all our program are related. And of course, you know, we put in a lot of innovation inside, which allows students to avoid delays in the graduation so that they can support the, the next, um, uh, you know, uh, that so can support the, the health delivery system. And um, in summary, you know, nursing education actually is essential uh, service at this point in time, especially, uh, you know, this COVID time, the coronavirus and, you know, the, how we are going to handle this uh, decision. So, so, as I said, nursing innovation is very, very important even, you know, um, in the, as they start in the universities or in the colleges or in the field. But, you know, we can also continue that in the hospital or in any such sector. Okay? And the quality of educational preparation provided to nurses is very important. And we also say that the transition support for nursing graduates, which they receive, and the availability of appropriate personal protective equipment will be taught to fight COVID-19. So basically, we are looking at not only the preparation, you know, in terms of just, uh, you know, teaching the nurses uh, in the college, but also during the transition period in the hospital, whereby, you know, the senior nurses will be mentored to the uh, new graduates who are mentees, and also looking at how to ensure that the nurses are safe to themselves and also safe to the, um, to the patients. Uh, by by in, uh, ensuring that you know they, they are protected by the you know by the equipment you know like the PPE and things like that to ensure that you know the, they can uh, be able to fight uh, COVID nineteen and of course uh, you know in Malaysia of course we have to preserve the health of Malaysia you know we we are working as a team on that and then uh, and Lincoln University College actually will always provide academic support to train frontliners in the healthcare so actually that is one of our um, you know, uh, vision. You know, to be uh, to to be a part of the healthcare uh, delivery uh, people of delivery system, so that uh, you know we also can contribute to the uh, nation building and to save that uh, nation, and not only nation but whoever comes to the country. So basically, uh, that is about all that we we'll said this morning. Maybe we can have a question and answer later on. And anyway, thank you for your attention. Good day. Thank you very much, that Professor Datu, Dr. Bibi, for that enlightening speech. Thank you, Datu. Thank you very much. Uh, thank having you, heard, let, let us give again a warm thank you to Datu. Thank you very much. So having heard the challenges, may we open the floor for comments, suggestions, questions, and clarifications. You may raise your icon hand, the reaction hand that is found here, that looks like this. Yes. 
Um, email the hi email. Yes. Hi. Hello. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Hi, Dato. How are you? Good morning from here. Good morning. Yeah. Um. I I just want to give a big applause from here. I'm from Sabah, but I work in the Middle East in Bahrain. Oh, okay. Yeah, nice I used to, to work with. Nice, nice to see you. Ah, thank you very much. Nice to see you as well. <laughs> and thank yeah, you because uh, you are able to join us this morning from Bahrain. Yeah, I tried. Um, Madam Norin gave me personal WhatsApp to join this, but you know the time it's not allowing. It's five hours gap. You know, but oh. I tried. Thank you. Yeah. So, but I missed the earlier um, presentation anyway. I, it was a great presentation at the end. Thank you. Yeah, so I was, I was thinking, this question actually arose to me since long before uh, the Lincoln started the, the, the program, you know, the bachelor. So I was, I just want to raise the question again today. Um, why is it still not possible to do the courses for the bachelor degree, the nursing, bachelor nursing degree online? For the, uh, you know, there are hundreds, many of Malaysian students working abroad, not only yeah, yeah. and not okay. only here in Bahrain. Um, you know, and across the world, I think there are many of us in, um, especially in Middle East, in Saudi Arabia, you know, in Singapore. I think Singapore, there will be no problem for them. But, uh, you know, there is still a Malaysian nursing uh, working abroad that would very interesting, very interested, you know, to continue their study in Malaysia, especially because, you know, if we study, if we work, we already work abroad, and we, if we continue study abroad, also it will cost of, it will cost us a lot of more effort than to just study. We have to provide many documents from Malaysia, you know, many um, things to get on it, dig a document, make equalization from Malaysia to bring to abroad, to bring abroad. Uh, so I was thinking, why don't uh, the Lincoln especially to start an online course just for the bachelor degree? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So Thank I'm you very much for your time. Yeah, I'm going to unmute my mic because it will be a um, gangguan, you know? Okay. So yeah. thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. That is a very good question. You don't have to worry. As I mentioned just now, Lincoln has been approved for an online delivery learning ODL for the bachelor's program. So you can actually join now, even. Hello. Is it? That, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you can thank you. No thank problem. you for the answer. Uh, 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 you know why? Um, let me tell you why it was not possible earlier. You must see in Malaysia, the policy of the Ministry of Higher Education, okay, which give license to the um, private uh, sector, you know, private universities, no, they, they, they don't mix um, online with traditional or the, uh, the, 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 the traditional way of, the, um, uh, of delivery, okay? But then they have changed the policy, so now they allow ODL. Of course, there are policies, there are procedures, there are protocols, but, um, you know, thanks God, Alhamdulillah, we have been approved for that. That is why I said our program in Lincoln is very, very interesting because it addresses anyone, even you now. So if anyone down, uh, you know, out there who are interested to come in for the bachelor program, and since you are already a diploma holder, you just have to come in for three years. The Malaysian Qualifying Agency has given one year of exemption. That is uh, 30 credit hours. So meaning you are only doing three years, all right, of blended learning. We call it blended learning because there is 
thing like you now, like a Zoom, we have assignments, we have online and things like that. So in fact, at this point in time, we are delivery, uh, delivering uh, actually the three-year program uh, in uh, in Malaysia. Actually, I think I think some of your friends are already in here. And in fact, we are starting one, uh, two cohorts in, um, in August. So you're very much welcome. And please tell everybody to come because it is a very, very interesting program. And it is very uh, convenient for, for you and for everyone else. So thank you for that question. So your, 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 your question is answered and you can join even at this very minute. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. You. Um, have a great day and take care. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Imelda. May we unmute the iPhone? The name is iPhone. Unmute yourself, please. Oh, unmuting me. Hello. Go ahead. Hello. Yeah, my name is uh, John Martins. Um, I joined from uh, Dubai, United Arab Emirates. Uh, welcome. <laughs> Formal alumni student of uh, Lincoln University College. I'm very happy for the lecture, formative lecture of uh, Dr. Mm -hmm. Bibi Florina this morning. I'm very happy joining. And also, in, in what uh, my uh, colleagues from uh, Berlin have already said, I've already joined the program, actually. Thank I'm you. The Thank program. you. And I'm enjoying the program of the Thank you very much. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you, Martin. Nice to meet you. Nice to talk with you. <laughs> Amen. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, uh, John Martins. We would like to call on the hand of OPPO A3. S, OPPO A3S, you can unmute yourself if you would like to ask. Or 007, okay, OPPO. Yes, go ahead. Okay, how about 007? You are raising your hand. You may you may unmute yourself and go ahead. What happened? <laughs> okay. Are there any okay. more other? Okay. I think Dayang, Dayang, Dayang Ku Nor Asma. Dayangku, you must unmute yourself. Selamat pagi, kemudian selamat hari raya sudah tu and all my members. Actually, thank you for join us to be a class in apa kita alam maya punya class. So thank you very much. Okay, continue my our study. Even though we just six in the group. But thanks a lot from our group, Dr. Bibi, so we can continue our class for next week. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yes. So, okay. Thank you, Diane. Thank you. Doreen put up her hand as well. Doreen is asking question. Hello, Doreen. Will you unmute yourself? Thank you. <laughs> Okay, um, it's um, a good morning to everybody um, from Qatar. Uh, nice to meet everybody here. It's a privilege to be able to be uh, here to join the group. 
and to ja to listen to Datu Bibi's uh, le uh, lecture for today. And um, uh, you know, I started also myself joining the program on Master in Nursing uh, Education with Lincoln. And uh, because of this COVID thing, it also gave us some positive um, effect in a way that, you know, it has um, like, um, it has uh, given um, a chance for all the education uh, department, uh, you know, uh, to change their delivery of care to make it possible for us to study even from far and to continue whatever we have done. We were quite anxious to know how are we going to continue our education. But uh, uh, Zoom and all these um, artificial intelligence have uh, given us, uh, you know, ways to be able to communicate with each other online. And now that Lincoln also have developed ODL for the courses, it will be uh, good for the other uh, nurses to uh, be able to continue the education. Uh, three of my colleagues have started also with Lincoln. <coughs> Uh, three of my colleagues that's working here from Malaysia, they have started with Lincoln the last semester in March. They were all in Kuala Lumpur. Um, they joined Kuala Lumpur um, branch, but it's yeah. also with Lincoln. And um, I think the only uh, feedback that I get from them is that um, uh, maybe be because of this online, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, module that uh, being delivered it's good. I think that um, uh, if even though it's ODL and it's only like um, session every now and then, they should have a regular session. Uh, they are able to communicate with their lecturer whenever they want, because that's what the feedback I get from my colleague that sometimes they try to communicate with their lecturer um, to clarify things and there should be like a, you know, interaction every now and then, not like beginning and end of the uh, program. Yeah. Uh, it should be constant, I think, so that, you know, uh, sometime like for us nursing, nurses, we work. We have a lot of things in our mind. We also do um, other uh, continuous uh, education with our hospital. And, uh, you know, there are a lot of things that's in our mind. And sometimes the thing we tend to forget, you know, we tend to forget some things when we open back our book or when we are doing the assignment and we need some clarification, we, we need to communicate with our lecturers. So it will be good that um, okay. with this detail, yeah. they'll be in, um, a contact with the lecturer or lecturers are available to be clarified every now yeah. and then. Okay. Point taken, Nuri. Point taken. No problems. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, yeah. we are actually we are now. In fact, um, they are on the Zoom, and also at any point in time, we can always contact the lecturer. You have an ID as well. Hello. Yeah, Dorin. So there's not a problem, but maybe we need to strengthen as what you have requested. So the point is that. Okay. Thank you, Dato. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And have a nice day yeah, in Qatar. Stay safe. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Doreen. Um, would anybody would like to raise their hand and give more comments and questions? <laughs> Yes, Galaxy then e Galaxy S10 e can you unmute yourself, please? Hi. Hi, Samikum Dato. And uh, good, uh, good morning, everyone. Is uh, I just want to say that uh, it's re really good uh, presentation and comprehensive system that uh, uh, that to have explained during during the COVID nineteen. Actually, this is a good things about COVID nineteen. I'm so grateful of all. Why? Because it's a 
become eye opener for Brunei, Brunei MOE. <laughs> Ever since that COVID-19 started, you know, so they actually approved that uh, online training or online education is part of the part of the delivery. Compared yes. to previously, they are so reluctant to to accept that tra online training or they're more preferable on the traditional teaching. Yes. Yeah. So this is the good things in, in uh, the moving forward uh, into our education system in Brunei. So I think our nursing uh, education uh, with a Lincoln that uh, the project that we're going on. Yes. So probably will be um, the mood of delivery also could yes. be uh, blended learning. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So thank you, Dato. So looking forward for uh, your support and <laughs> continuous uh, <laughs> waiting for me. <laughs> Thank you, Asni. Thank you very much. We are always supporting you. And actually, I'm so happy that, you know, this is the positive effect of COVID-19, uh, the online yeah. delivery. Yeah, so it's good for us. And, then, uh, and which means education, education is made accessible to everyone. So I know what Correct. I want to stress here. What I want to stress here in Lincoln is that we make sure that education is accessible to everyone. Thank you, Asli. Yeah. And from Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Galaxy S Ten E. We would like to still open the floor for other questions and inquiries. So if we don't have any other questions, without further ado, without further ado, can I, can I invite Madam Noreen, the head of programs for, and deputy director at, at Ministry of Health, Kota Kinabalu, and director of Training Institute, Ministry of Health, Sandakan, and now she's the marketing director of Lincoln University College for her delivery and speech. Welcome, Madam Noreen. Go ahead. Thank you, Dr. Duke, for the kind introduction. Hi, good morning, everyone. How is everyone today? I think I'm too late to wish everyone here Selamat Hari Raya. Idil Fitri, Mav Zayed and Batin. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to e Lincoln University East Seminar. We bring the world best online nursing education course to your home. Before this, we have listened to Yang Berbahagia Professor Datu Bibi Florina, her talk on the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on nursing education. Datu also has mentioned that to preserve the health of Malaysia, Lincoln University will provide academic support to train frontliners in the healthcare. Why choose Lincoln University College? It is because Lincoln is one of the primary private institutions of higher education approved by the Ministry of Higher Education and Malaysian Qualifications Agency. And our focus is student-centered and student-directed learning. Our philosophy is that Everyone has claim to education in order to better their life, advance their career, and reach their desired level of personal success. This is our strength, ladies and gentlemen. The Lincoln University is highly qualified, experienced, diverse ethnic academicians. Continuous involvement in research and grants awards all specialties. Our programs are approved by the Ministry of Education and Malaysian Qualifications Agencies. And we have partnerships and collaborations with 
various agencies locally and abroad. And our tuition fees are competitive and affordable. These are the 11 field of studies that are available in Lincoln University College. Medicine, dentistry, nursing, pharmacy, health sciences, hospitality and tourism management, business and accountancy, social science and art, art and humanities, engineering and built environment, computer science and multimedia technology, and pre-university study. But ladies and gentlemen, today, I only want to share with you the nursing program that we brings the world's based online course to your home. Link can we have six programs that I'm going to talk today. First of all is Bachelor of Science Honors in Nursing, Master in Nursing Education, Master in Nursing Research, Master in Nursing Midwifery, Master in Nursing Public Health, and PhD in Nursing. Let me talk about Bachelor of Science Honors in Nursing. This, uh, this course, the duration of this course is four years. For you guys, if you have diplomas, diplomas if you are a dip diplomas holder, you only study for three years and as one year credit transferred allowed by NQA. The mode of learning is full time and the program delivery is blended learning. It can be face-to-face, -face, it can be online. Nowadays, we are online most of the time. Every day, every night, we are online with our students. So the entry requ uh, requirement for this Bachelor of Science in Nursing, one must pass Diploma in Nursing, registered with the Nursing Board Malaysia, has annual practicing certificate, the latest one, and at least have three years of working experience. For this Bachelor Nursing in, in Nursing, Bachelor Nursing, with this program we provide the following opportunities for our nurses. Promotions to, I, the, to higher grade, especially in the government sector, to be lecturers, educators in public and private sectors, to be ward managers and supervisors. Now I'm going to talk about our full master program in Lincoln University. First of all, Master in Nursing Education. The intake for this course is January, March, April, and September. And durations of the course is two years. And the entry qualification is one must possess basic degree in nursing or nursing related degree with minimum of CGPA 2.75. For those did not achieve the 2.75, but above 2.5 CGPA, it can be accepted subjective to rigorous internal assessment. And one must register with nursing board and possess, possess the current APC and minimum three years working experience for bachelor degree, uh, bachelor degree holders, and minimum one year of teaching experience. So this is for the master in nursing education. The next one is master in nursing by research. The intake is January, May, and September. Duration is two years. The requirement is bachelor degree in nursing or nursing degree with minimum of CGPA 2.5. For those who did not meet the CGPA 2.5 or its equivalent, it can be con accepted on condition candidate has five years experience in the relevant fields. And one must register in nursing board, possess the current FPC, and has three years minimum experience for bachelor bachelor degree holders and currently working in the clinical areas. The third one is Master of Nursing in Midwifery. 
this is opportunity for our midwives. The intake for this course is January, May, and September. Uh, this is a two years course. So the entry requirement is the same just now, is CGPA 2.75. And if it is not achieved, if those who didn't achieve 2.5 CGPA still can be accepted subject to rigorous internal assessment and must be registered with nursing board, possess current APC, three years experience in bachelor degree holders, and this is important, one must possess advanced diploma or certificate for post basic in midwifery. So the fourth one is Master of Nursing Public Health. This is the opportunity for all public health nurses. The intake is January, March, September. The duration is the same, two years. The requirement are the same, but one must possess advanced diploma certificate for basic in public health. So this is meant for public health nurses. All these must program will provide the following opportunities for our nurses. They can work in the government agencies, they can work home in the home health care, nursing care center, outpatient care center, social service agency, education sector, as, as uh, in the private, as well as in the private school, colleges, and university. These are the opportunity for the nurses. Last but not least, there is one more course that is a Doctor of Philosophy in Nursing. So this program, a PhD in Nursing, it is designed for students to conduct research in the field of nursing sciences. So it is a three years program, minimum of three years. Entry requirement, one must possess master of nursing or allied science or related field as accepted by Lincoln College Senate. So what are the careers opportunity for this PhD nurse? Well, they can be a researcher, can be clinical researcher, can be health profession educator, can be public health administrator, can be lecturer, Professor in the academic institutions. Ladies and gentlemen, becoming a nurse leader does require steadfast ambition as well as perseverance. We have to foster a culture in nurse leadership. Nurses must develop the necessary training initiative to prepare for a leadership roles knowledgeable to participate in the professional organization. However, once the nurse has achieved leadership role, you will be able to make even more a difference in the lives of your patients, agree or not. We will make a difference to our patients if we are knowledgeable. So it is very important that we have to update with the, latest, with the latest trends in nursing education. So, let's go back to school. Let's go back to school. These days, and then in school isn't as hard as it is used to be, as now there are plenty of online programs that can be done in nurses' spare time. So, there is not much problem as what Nowadays, I said, most of the time we are online with the nurse and also all over the world. So it's not much problem. So let's go back to school. So with this, if with this, I would like to invite everyone. For details, please client contact me. Please, you can drop email to me. You can drop WhatsApp to me. Uh, this is my WhatsApp, this is my uh, number, and this is my email. You can drop to me. And also you can 
drop your WhatsApp or you can call Ms. Nurul at this number. And with this, I would like to end my talk. And thank you for your attention. Thank you so much. Over to you, Dr. Dio. Thank you very Dr. much. Dio. Thank you very much, Madam Noreen. That was a nice presentation. May we call on, I may we give the floor to all the comments, suggestions, and uh, reactions, especially inquiries on how to apply to Lincoln University College. And we have the floor for answering from um, Madam Noreen and uh, Datu Dr. Haja Bibi Florina, Professor Bibi, Professor Datu Dr. Bibi. She can answer the questions and inquiries that you will have to ask. You can use the icon reaction like this from your Zoom icon reactions if you have any questions so that I can unmute you. Ah, yes, Barack, yeah, you would you like to ask something? Barack, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, I mean, um, I just want to sort of uh, recap. Actually, um, uh, Puan Noreen has sort of, um, uh, you know, like uh, promoted or, uh, or rather tell you um, what we are offering in Lincoln. Just as I mentioned earlier that we are addressing the education needs of the nurses, even from the lower level, you know, from the diploma until the PhD. And then what she has mentioned also that, you know, this is a very uh, convenient way of learning the online delivery system. And especially during this point in time, you know, where, you know, we have a problem, so much of challenges, like, you know, where you are, you know, the remoteness of the area, you know, the distance that you are, you know, like transportation and communication, everything is a problem for you to come. Like, actually, yesterday, somebody was telling me that they wanted to join the master program, but because they're in some way. But then I have updated her by saying that, you know, uh, the, the delivery system in, um, in LinkedIn is basically an online delivery system. So it is actually very, very um, you know, convenient for you. And this is, as I said, to address, uh, you know, the, the situation we are now. And even the Ministry of Higher Education has actually, um, you know, I wanted of us to do online, um, you know, delivery at this point in time. Because uh, we are supposed to stay home and stay set. So what she has actually, um, you know, um, I told you all is the, you know, what we have in Lincoln and, you know, how you go about doing it. And she, can, she has also uh, put her contacts there so that, you know, you can always contact her for more information on the email and also on the WhatsApp. Uh, just in case that, you know, after this, you are thinking, you know, you're thinking and, uh, you know, there's a question that uh, you, you have forgotten at this time. So, I mean, you can always ask any one of us. So it's better that, you know, you you be um, you know, uh, especially just now, like our friend from, is it from Qatar, uh, you know, that uh, she wanted a, a bachelor online. And actually, we have just updated you all that we have been approved for an ODL program for nursing. So you can even join at any time. Yeah, from Bahrain. Actually, she's from Bahrain. And you know, the master program is very convenient as well because it is not only a two-year program. And you know what? delivered so far now. In fact, we are in Somalia and uh, Dr. Duke is handling that with Dr. Ramesh. And, you know, and we are very successful in that, I think. The money in, uh, in nursing by research is also very, very convenient for you because there is no, basically, bes uh, beside the, um, the uh, research and also the research methodology in IT application, 
because these are the, 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 the things that you need to know when you go by research. And in this uh, master in nursing by research, you can actually uh, research on any area of interest or any area that you need to uh, address or you think that is very important. And so that will be your paper in that master. And I really like that you all go to the PhD because from that, uh, you know, the, the paper that you are taking in the master in research, nursing in nursing research, you can always put some intelligence and that will uh, make another, you know, you continue as your, your your proposal for the PhD program. So, so we always advocate, you know, like smart learning, you know, what sort of area you're looking at and try to look at an area which will, um, which, which will, uh, contribute yeah, to, to the uh, which will improve the situation and if possible because in research now we are we are looking at research for publication and also for your uh, to meet your requirement uh, for your PhD requirement but we also look at commercialization so basically you are looking you can also look at products you know at products research products or you know have in terms of nursing what are the things that you need you know you look at the situation now and how you're going to go about it. So basically, it is a very interesting area, the master in uh, nursing by research, where you know, you're, you're free to think what you think you want to do. And then you go on to the PhD, because all of master is only three year, uh, two years, and the PhD is three years. So basically, it's only five years to complete a master and a PhD. And we will uh, deliver to you very conveniently wherever you are. So you know, that is what we have in Lincoln. So we thought that you know, we need to let you know so that you have the options. You know, of course, there are many programs in many universities and everything is good, but we like to let you know that what we do in Lincoln, we are doing things very different in a sense that we will deliver that education to you. So we try to make it accessible. This is in line with our vision and mission of Lincoln University College that we, we, we provide education for everyone huh? um, without, uh, without um, uh, injustice. So this is what we are looking at and that is why we want to, we have to choose the best mode of delivery for you all so that you know you can you know you can acquire or you can uh, get whatever you need huh, from this program. So that is actually what uh, we are trying to do and what uh, Madam Norin um, you know uh, explained to you. So if you have any question. Hi Ibrahim, you are from Kenya. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Ibrahim, go ahead. No, no, she's not asking. I'm just saying hello to him. <laughs> um, okay. Galaxy. Hi, Galaxy. You can unmute yourself. Galaxy Note 9. Uh, she's asking how to apply for degree in nursing. Galaxy Note 9. Okay. Uh, maybe Norin can explain that. Oh, how to apply bachelor in nursing? Yeah, Galaxy nine. Note Nine. I think that's, okay. all, that's all the question was. All right. First of all, you um, you can apply online or contact me. Contact us with the number just now, WhatsApp, or write email to us. Maybe, maybe, you can give, uh, maybe you can yeah, maybe you can tell what the information that you need from them for the application. Okay, if you like to um, apply, you must give us the, your 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 identification card uh, numbers, your name, and then your um, email address, your um, your address, home address, your handphone number your contact number and WhatsApp to us. WhatsApp to us and we will guide you. We will guide you. Azuriani. Azuriani is asking, she's from Kelantan and she would like to ask. Azuriani, go ahead. Azriani, you can unmute yourself. Hi. Azriani Yajid, go ahead. Azriani. 
Okay, let's go for Esther Wong. Esther Wong, unmute yourself. Go ahead. Hello. Good morning. Can you hear me? Hello. Hello. Can you hear yeah. me? Hi. Yes. Yeah, Tato. We can hear you. Yeah, hi. And my, my ex boss, Noreen, how are you? Hi. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> Actually, Dr. Prof, I'm interested to look into PhD. Can you give me for some information on PhD? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Are you, uh, Noreen, are you answering? Or I'm... Okay. The, this is the three year program, the PhD in nursing. You're talking about the PhD in nursing, right? So for the entry qualification, you must have a master in nursing, and then uh, of course uh, your program. And, uh, this three-year program um, actually uh, you only have to study two modules. As I said, it's uh, the uh, research methodology and the active applications. And after that, you you know we need your proposals uh, for your topic. Of course, you have to come and uh, you know do the proposal defense. So the moment it is um, it is accepted. Of we will uh, allocate a supervisor for you uh, to do your paper. So this program for three years, it will be you and the supervisor. And of course, we need to have you to um, attend conferences at least two minimum, and, uh, and uh, publications, yeah, publication, article publication, which you have to do, and um, you have to uh, publish in the uh, Scopus Journal. You know, that's the the index, the Scopus Index Journal. That is a requirement of the Malaysian Qualifying Agency. Uh, that is what uh, you know. Basically, that you do, and uh, and at the end of the three years, you go for your um, viva, and you become a PhD holder. Very easy, right? Yeah. So everything is online. Hello, uh, Prof. Uh, can you hear yes. me? Yeah. Uh, I don't have master in nursing, but I have master in education. How about that? Yeah. What's your comment? That. Yes, yes. But you are a nurse, right? You're a nurse. You have a bachelor yes, in yes, nursing. Nurse. Yeah, you have a I bachelor in nursing, but have master in yeah. education. Yes, you, you, we can accept that. Okay, thank you for the info. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Esther Wong. Hi, Mr. Wong. Uh, hey, welcome, Dr. Ghazali. Welcome, Dr. Ghazali. Welcome, Dr. Ghazali. <laughs> yeah. uh, I would just like to uh, echo the question from a student from Kota Baru just now, Azuriani. Her line is not clear, but she is very she is representing her, her, her few classmates. Wanted to know when will the Kota Baru program start, the PhD and the Masters. Thank you, Dr. Ghazali. Actually, Dr. Ghazali is from the Faculty of Medic Medicine. Yeah, and she's based in Kota Baru. Just to introduce Dr. Ghazali. Welcome, and, Dr. Uh, Ghazali. <laughs> Yeah, uh, actually, uh, for the PhD in nursing, because um, now we are waiting for KTP uh, for the entry, you know, the entry, but I was informed that we can start in July, all right? That is why anyone who comes in, they can, uh, you know, we will dis uh, register them in July, and then we will wait for the uh, Ministry of Education, uh, you know, when actually we can start the program. So, because of this, uh, basically, just because of the COVID uh, situation, the MCO and things like that, you know, the movement control order. Otherwise, you know, we can start it at any time. Uh, that no problem at all because uh, we will do it as an online. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Kumar, may we ask Mr. Kumar to unmute yourself? He has a question. When will the master in master in master program? When will the master program commence, Kumar? You can unmute yourself. Yeah, maybe she Norin can answer now. Norin? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Master Nursing. Hello, Kumar. Hello. I think he has a Yeah, we are hearing you. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. What's the question just now, Dr. Dio? He didn't mention the Master in Nursing in specific, but he just asked, when will the master commence? Okay, the semester commence if it is online. Does mean we can commence it, um, as soon as possible in the, at the end of June or early July. That is in our plan. Yeah. Okay. If it is online. We can start very soon. Somewhere in July, early of July, we can start. 
Hello, Kumar. Uh, I think he, I think he got the answer, madam. Thank you very oh, much. Video. Your, with your document, you send your document to me as soon as possible, Kumar. So basically, as I said, the, um, the decision on this is based on the Ministry of Education because of the online thing. But anyone can apply now and then maybe we can, um, you know, we can start in July. Uh, so the, the the application we can accept now already because in fact we we have all this uh, semester intact but because of the situation so we have to comply to the uh, uh, SOP and the procedure or uh, uh, rather protocols of the of policy of the Ministry of Education so we are waiting but you can you can now uh, you know send in your application. Does that answer your question, Kumar? Kumar, go ahead. Unmute yourself. Hi, Kumar. Okay. Hello, madam. Hi, Kumar, go ahead. Yeah, uh, okay, I will contact you later regarding the master program. I will text you later. Thank you for the talk. Kumar, did you get the number? Did, were you able to receive the number? Yes, yes. I got Madam Noreen number. Thank you. Yes, Kumar, I'm waiting for your, your document, okay? Okay, Madam, thank you. You're welcome. Are there any other questions on the floor? I want to say hello to Ibrahim. Can you can you can you hear me, Ibrahim? Go hello, ahead, Ibrahim. Unmute yourself. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, madam. Yeah. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining me this morning. I'm fine. I'm, uh, yeah. Thank you, doctor. Yeah. I'm really enjoying. I'm following up, and I think yeah. I'll be able to to contact you. There. But yeah. for sure, I've really enjoyed. Yeah. And inshallah, I will be joining you soon. Online. Okay. Inshallah. Inshallah. Thank you for your time. Thank you very thank much, you for yes. doctor. Yeah. Thank you. I'm happy. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Ibrahim. Are there any other questions on the floor? Okay, I think that will be, be. Would you like to give them a last few words before we yeah. end the program? So, uh, actually, um, thank you very much for joining me this morning. I'm so happy, um, especially those you know that has been with me all this while. And I'm so happy that you know you're all working everywhere. Martin, you are there. Uh, I'm happy to join Dubai. Yeah, so happy with you. You are in Queen before I know. I know that. <laughs> and I thank you for the picture that you have sent. You know, you have sent. But I remember you in uh, Kedah last time. Remember, Alosta? Yeah, Martin is our student and happy that you have joined our master program. And of course, Doreen is there. And you know, all the, you know, all our staff before, you know, our friends. I'm so happy that you're uh, with us. And um, now that we are here, even uh, Madam Noreen, uh, Josephine, Maureen, and Skostika. We are all are trying our best, um, you know, to, to to run programs for you all. So please tell your friends. You know, I, I really I really love to see all of you come in uh, for the degree program, for the master program, and for the PhD program. Uh, what we try to do here, as I said, that you know we want to make it very very convenient for you without compromising quality. So the standard is there, the quality is there. So we want you to have the best education ever, uh, but in the most convenient way. 
So at any time you need any help, please feel free. Yeah? Any suggestion, as what Doreen says, there must be an interaction between the lecturers and the, and the students. Of course, you know, we have the Lincoln Learning System where we have uploaded all our, our, our notes, our lectures and that. And if you have an ID, you can always go in, huh? go in and visit. And if you have a problem, you can always, um, you know, uh, contact your, your, your coordinator. So this is what we are trying to say. And, um, and I wish you all the best, huh? all the best during this time. Whatever we are, as I said, we stand stable and we have to be resilient huh? in the uh, uh, in the situation. Right? We nurses, actually, we are very, very strong. We are the very strong people. Huh? And then we can uh, sort of um, address any situation uh, we, are, we, are, we, we will face. Any challenges, uh, for example, the COVID-19. So that is why I was thinking this morning, I, am, I just want to say hello to everyone to ensure that, you know, you all are safe. And we also want to update you what we have in Lincoln. Basically, you have whatever it takes. So, you know, at any time, please come. And, uh, you know, you can also ask your friend to come over because we have a good education. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and all my friends, uh, have a good day. Stay safe, stay at home, and keep in touch. Bye-bye. Assalamualaikum and a good day. Thank you very much, young Barbara, <laughs> Professor Gatti. Thank you. Hello. Thank Bye. you, Bye. Yeah, Professor Dato, for uh, this Good wonderful day. seminar. Good and day. I would like to say thank, thank you, you for every for, to everyone for coming today and for joining Good. us. And I will unmute you all so you can say hi to everyone. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Let's give us a clap. Thank you, big family. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum to everyone. Thank you, madam. Thank you, Dato. Take care. You too, madam. Bye, Mimi. Pola-pola protokol yang ada. Chicken. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Dari awal side. Yang yang partisipasi tadi. Terima kasih.